Hello, my name is Tammy Medlin, and I'm the local history librarian here at the Wilson County Public Library. Thank you for joining today's program. Wilson Memorial Hospital opened on September 1st, 1964, and three other local hospitals closed their doors the same day. They are gone, but not forgotten. Let's take a look back at three historic hospitals. Originally named Moore Herring after its founders, Dr. C.E. Moore and Dr. B.S. Herring, the hospital located at 116-118 North Douglas Street opened in 1913. After Dr. Moore left, it became known as Woodard Herring in 1935. Located at 504 East Green Street, the Wilson Hospital and Tubercular Home was opened by Dr. Frank Hargrave, Samuel Vick, and J.D. Reed in 1913. Dr. Hargrave moved to New Jersey in 1929, and the hospital reopened as Mercy in 1930. It was the only hospital for African Americans in Wilson, Pitt, and Greene counties. After Dr. Hargrave left, there were no full-time doctors on staff. African American physicians who had offices in the community and doctors from Carolina General and Woodard Herring would come to see their patients at Mercy and leave them in the care of the nursing staff. People recovering from illness and women giving birth remained at Mercy. Patients needing surgery were taken to Woodard Herring or Carolina General and brought back to Mercy to recover. I was fortunate enough to find an early photo showing the staff of the Wilson Hospital and Tubercular Home, later Mercy Hospital. On the far left is Henrietta Cover, a nurse, in the middle is Dr. Frank Hargraves, one of the hospital's founders, and at the far right is Dr. William Michener. Unfortunately, the other people in the photo are unidentified. This photo dates between 1913 and 1929 when Dr. Hargrave left. Built in 1920 and located at 103 North Pine Street, Carolina General was the last of the three hospitals to be constructed. It did not follow the Greek Revival style of the other two. Carolina General had four founders. On the left is Dr. Henry Best Blount. On the right, Dr. Ernest Lee Strickland. Not pictured are Dr. Kitchen Carl Moore and Dr. Paul Peyton Lane. The depression caused problems for all three hospitals. In 1928, Wood and Carolina General combined staff and facilities. Doctors kept their offices at Wooded Herring while patients and nurses were moved to Carolina General. If you needed to get to the hospital, you would call the funeral home. According to this listing from the Wilson City Directory of 1962, Darden Memorial, Hamilton, Hunt, Joiners, and Thomas Yelverton all owned ambulances. Hunt even announced that his ambulance was oxygen equipped. Today, if you go to the hospital, you might put it on Facebook. But back in the 1920s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s, newspapers were the social media. The names of people admitted to the hospital could often be found in the Wilson Daily Times. Reports of illnesses, surgeries, births, etc. This announcement also proved that patients came from outside Wilson County, as we have a couple who announcing the birth of their daughter from Nashville, and another announcing the birth of their daughter from Kinley. Woodard Herring and Carolina General both had nursing schools. The programs were usually three years in length. Students learned by taking classes and working with patients. They often boarded at the hospital. This is the class of 1959 from Woodard Herring. Left to right, Geraldine Davis Mooring, Myrtle Cleo Rowe, Eva Grace Barrow, Ruby Athleen Matthews, Minnie Lee Coward, Frances Louise Nelson, and Mary Bernice Mooring. I was fortunate enough to find a few photos that show the interior of some of the hospitals. This is the children's ward in Mercy Hospital. Please notice that everything is metal and white in color, so it was probably easy to see when something needed cleaning. Bright colors and comfortable chairs for parents did not seem to be a concern. Healthcare equals paperwork, and I'm sure Mr. Hines, the longtime administrator of Mercy Hospital, would agree. Charts, bills, receipts, etc., 
would have been filled out and filed by hand. I do not see a typewriter in this office, but if one was available, it would have been manual. How busy could a hospital kitchen be? In 1950, Woodard Herring said their new kitchen and cafeteria could serve 300 meals a day. The kitchen in this photo was actually located in Mercy Hospital. This photo shows a private room in Woodard Herring Hospital. Air conditioning would have been much appreciated during the North Carolina summer when many people did not have access to such a luxury at home. But please note, there is no TV or a comfortable chair for visitors. This is the x-ray room at Carolina General. The nurse in the photo is Mary Ella Glover, who worked in the x-ray department from 1940 until the hospital closed in 1964. The physician is listed as Dr. Gibbs, but unfortunately, the patient's name is unknown. This is very different from an x-ray room we would see today. After closing in 1964, Woodard Herring and Carolina General were soon sold and demolished. Many of the physicians associated with Carolina General moved their offices to the new Carolina Clinic, which soon opened across the street from the new Wilson Memorial. Meanwhile, Wilson Clinic was operated by staff from Woodard Herring and was soon located across from the hospital as well. Both clinics are now closed. Although it stood empty for years, Mercy is the only one of the three hospitals still standing. It is now home to the Wilson Community Improvement Association. Thank you for joining today's program. If you're interested in learning more about the hospitals mentioned, please consult the following sources which can be found in our local history room. Wilson, North Carolina, A Pictorial History, 1993, Wilson Chamber of Commerce. History of Carolina General Hospital and School of Nursing, Wilson, North Carolina, 1920 through 1964, edited by Lucille Wilkerson and Mary Kate Benson. Mercy Hospital, Emergence of the First Black Hospital in Eastern North Carolina, 1912 to 1964, Nicole Lewis, Thesis, North Carolina Central University, 1998. Thank you for watching.